In graph theory, a planar graph is a graph that can be embedded in the plane, i.e., it can be drawn on the plane in such a way that its edges intersect only at their endpoints. In other words, it can be drawn in such a way that no edges cross each other. Such a drawing is called a plane graph or planar embedding of the graph. A plane graph can be defined as a planar graph with a mapping from every node to a point on a plane, and from every edge to a plane curve on that plane, such that the extreme points of each curve are the points mapped from its end nodes, and all curves are disjoint except on their extreme points. Every graph that can be drawn on a plane can be drawn on the sphere as well, and vice versa. Plane graphs can be encoded by combinatorial maps. The equivalence class of topologically equivalent drawings on the sphere is called a planar map. Although a plane graph has an external or unbounded face, none of the faces of a planar map have a particular status. A generalization of planar graphs are graphs which can be drawn on a surface of a given genus. In this terminology, planar graphs have graph genus 0, since the planar surfaces of genus 0. C. Graph embedding For other related topics, Kuratowski's and Wagner's theorems. The Polish mathematician Kazimierz Kuratowski provided a characterization of planar graphs in terms of forbidden graphs now known as Kuratowski's theorem. A finite graph is planar if and only if it does not contain a subgraph that is a subdivision of K5 or K3. 3. A subdivision of a graph results from inserting vertices into edges zero or more times. Instead of considering subdivisions, Wagner's theorem deals with minors. A finite graph is planar if and only if it does not have K5 or K3. 3 is a minor. Klaus Wagner asked more generally whether any minor closed class of graphs is determined by a finite set of forbidden minors. This is now the Robertson-Seymour theorem, proved in a long series of papers. In the language of this theorem, K5 and K3, 3 are the forbidden minors for the class of finite planar graphs. Other planarity criteria. In practice, it is difficult to use Kuratowski's criterion to quickly decide whether a given graph is planar. However, there exist fast algorithms for this problem. For a graph with n vertices, it is possible to determine in time o whether the graph may be planar or not. For a simple, connected, planar graph with v vertices and e edges, the following simple conditions hold. Theorem 1. If V3 then E3 V-6. Theorem 2. If V3 and there are no cycles of length 3, then E2 V-4. In this sense, planar graphs are sparse graphs in that they have only O edges, asymptotically smaller than the maximum O. The graph K3, 3, for example, has 6 vertices, 9 edges, and no cycles of length 3. Therefore, by theorem 2, it cannot be planar. Note that these theorems provide necessary conditions for planarity that are not sufficient conditions, and therefore can only be used to prove a graph is not planar, not that it is planar. If both theorem 1 and 2 fail, other methods may be used. Whitney's planarity criterion gives a characterization based on the existence of an algebraic dual. MacLane's planarity criterion gives an algebraic characterization of finite planar graphs via their cycle spaces. The Fries cis rose and steel planarity criterion gives a characterization based on the existence of a bipartition of the Cotri edges of a depth first. Search tree. It is central to the left-right planarity testing algorithm. Schneider's theorem gives a characterization of planarity in terms of partial order dimension. Colin de Verdier's planarity criterion gives a characterization based on the maximum multiplicity of the second eigenvalue of certain Schrödinger operators defined by the graph. The Hannany-Tutt theorem states that a graph is planar if and only if it has a drawing in which each independent pair of edges crosses an even number. If times, it can be used to characterize the planar graphs via a system of equations modulo 2. Euler's formula Euler's formula states that if a finite, connected, planar graph is drawn in the plane without any edge intersections, 
and V is the number of vertices, E is the number of edges and F is the number of faces, then V minus E plus F equals 2. As an illustration, in the butterfly graph given above, V equals 5, E equals 6 and F equals 3. If the second graph is redrawn without edge intersections, it has V equals 4, E equals 6 and F equals 4. In general, if the property holds for all planar graphs of F faces, any change to the graph that creates an additional face while keeping the graph planar would keep V minus E plus F an invariant. Since the property holds for all graphs with f equals 2, by mathematical induction it holds for all cases. Euler's formula can also be proved as follows. If the graph isn't a tree, then remove an edge which completes a cycle. This lowers both e and f by 1, leaving v minus e plus f constant. Repeat until the remaining graph is a tree. Trees have V equals E plus 1 and F equals 1, yielding V minus E plus F equals 2, i.e., the Euler characteristic is 2. In a finite, connected, simple, planar graph, any face is bounded by at least three edges and every edge touches at most two faces, using Euler's formula. One can then show that these graphs are sparse in the sense that E3 V minus 6 if V3. Euler's formula is also valid for convex polyhedra. This is no coincidence. Every convex polyhedron can be turned into a connected, simple, planar graph by using the Schlegel diagram of the polyhedron. A perspective projection of the polyhedron onto a plane with the center of perspective chosen near the center of one of the polyhedron's faces. Not every planar graph corresponds to a convex polyhedron in this way. The trees do not, for example. Steinitz's theorem says that the polyhedral graphs formed from convex polyhedra are precisely the finite three connected simple planar graphs. More generally, Euler's formula applies to any polyhedron whose faces are simple polygons that form a surface topologically equivalent to a sphere, regardless of its convexity. Average degree from V minus E plus F equals 2 and it follows via algebraic transformations that the average degree is strictly less than 6. Otherwise the given graph can't be planar. Coin graphs we say that two circles drawn in a plane kiss whenever they intersect in exactly one point. A coin graph is a graph formed by a set of circles, no two of which have overlapping interiors. By making a vertex for each circle and an edge for each pair of circles that kiss, the circle packing theorem, first proved by Paul Kober in 1936, states that a graph is planar if and only if it is a coin graph. This result provides an easy proof of Ferry's theorem, that every planar graph can be embedded in the plane in such a way that its edges are straight-line segments that do not cross each other. If one places each vertex of the graph at the center of the corresponding circle in a coin graph representation, then the line segments between centers of kissing circles do not cross any of the other edges. Related families of graphs Maximal planar graph A simple graph is called maximal planar if it is planar but adding any edge would destroy that property. All faces are then bounded by three edges, explaining the alternative term plane triangulation. The alternative names triangular graph or triangulated graph have also been used, but are ambiguous as they more commonly refer to the line graph of a complete graph and to the chordal graphs respectively. Every maximal planar is three vertex connected. If a maximal planar graph has v vertices with v greater than 2, then it has precisely three v minus 6 edges and two v minus 4 faces. Apollonian networks are the maximal planar graphs formed by repeatedly splitting triangular faces into triples of smaller triangles. Equivalently, they are the plane of three trees. Strangulated graphs are the graphs in which every peripheral cycle is a triangle. In a maximal planar graph the peripheral cycles are the faces, so maximal planar graphs are strangulated. The strangulated graphs include also the chordal graphs, and are exactly the graphs that can be formed by clique sums of complete graphs in maximal planar graphs. 
Every outer planar graph is planar, but the converse is not true. K4 is planar but not outer planar. A theorem similar to Kuratovsky's states that a finite graph is outer planar if and only if it does not contain a subdivision of K4 or of K2. 3. A one outer planar embedding of a graph is the same as an outer planar embedding. For k greater than 1 a planar embedding is k outer planar if removing the vertices on the outer face results in a outer planar embedding. A graph is k outer planar if it has a k outer planar embedding. Hallen graph A Hallen graph is a graph formed from an undirected plane tree by connecting its leaves into a cycle, in the order given by the plane embedding of the tree. Equivalently, it is a polyhedral graph in which one face is adjacent to all the others. Every Hallen graph is planar. Like outer planar graphs, Hallen graphs have low tree width, making many algorithmic problems on them more easily solved than in unrestricted planar graphs. Other related families An apex graph is a graph that may be made planar by the removal of one vertex. And AK apex graph is a graph that may be made planar by the removal of at most k vertices. A one-planar graph is a graph that may be drawn in the plane with at most one simple crossing per edge. And a k-planar graph is a graph that may be drawn with at most k simple crossings per edge. A toroidal graph is a graph that can be embedded without crossings on the torus. More generally, the genus of a graph is the minimum genus of a two-dimensional surface into which the graph may be embedded. Planar graphs have genus 0 in. Non-planar toroidal graphs have genus 1. Any graph may be embedded into three-dimensional space without crossings. However, a three-dimensional analog of the planar graphs is provided by the linklessly embeddable graphs. Graphs that can be embedded into three-dimensional space in such a way that no two cycles are topologically linked with each other. In analogy to Kuratovsky's and Wagner's characterizations of the planar graphs as being the graphs that do not contain K5 or K3, 3 is a minor. The linklessly embeddable graphs may be characterized as the graphs that do not contain as a minor any of the seven graphs in the Peterson family. In analogy to the characterizations of the outer planar and planar graphs as being the graphs with Colin de Verdier graph invariant at most 2 or 3. The linklessly embeddable graphs are the graphs that have Colin de Verdier invariant at most 4. An upward planar graph is a directed acyclic graph that can be drawn in the plane with its edges as non-crossing curves that are consistently oriented in an upward direction. Not every planar directed acyclic graph is upward planar, and it is NP-complete to test whether a given graph is upward planar. Enumeration of planar graphs the asymptotic for the number of planar graphs on vertices is where an almost all planar graphs have an exponential number of automorphisms. The number of unlabeled planar graphs on vertices is between in other facts and definitions. Every planar graph is four-partite, or four-colorable. This is the graph theoretical formulation of the four-color theorem. Ferry's theorem states that every simple planar graph admits an embedding in the plane such that all edges are straight-line segments which don't intersect. A universal point set is a set of points such that every planar graph with n vertices has such an embedding with all vertices in the point set. There exist universal point sets of quadratic size, formed by taking a rectangular subset of the integer lattice. Every simple outer planar graph admits an embedding in the plane such that all vertices lie on a fixed circle and all edges are straight line segments that lie inside the disk and don't intersect. So n vertex regular polygons are universal for outer planar graphs. Given an embedding G of a connected graph in the plane without edge intersections, we construct the dual graph G asterisk as follows. We choose one vertex in each face of G and for each edge E and G we introduce a new edge in G asterisk connecting the two vertices in G asterisk corresponding to the two faces in G that meet at E. 
Furthermore, this edge is drawn so that it crosses E exactly once and that no other edge of G or G asterisk is intersected. Then G asterisk is again the embedding of a planar graph. It has as many edges as G, as many vertices as G has faces and as many faces as G has vertices. The term dual is justified by the fact that G asterisk asterisk equals G. Here the equality is the equivalence of embeddings on the sphere. If G is the planar graph corresponding to a convex polyhedron, then G asterisk is the planar graph corresponding to the dual polyhedron. Duals are useful because many properties of the dual graph are related in simple ways to properties of the original graph, enabling results to be proven about graphs by examining their dual graphs. While the dual constructed for a particular embedding is unique, graphs may have different duals, obtained from different embeddings. A Euclidean graph is a graph in which the vertices represent points in the plane, and the edges are assigned lengths equal to the Euclidean distance between those points. See geometric graph theory. A plane graph is said to be convex if all of its faces are convex polygons. A planar graph may be drawn convexly if and only if it is a subdivision of a three-vertex connected planar graph. Scheinerman's conjecture states that every planar graph can be represented as an intersection graph of line segments in the plane. The planar separator theorem states that every n-vertex planar graph can be partitioned into two subgraphs of size at most 2n, 3 by the removal of O, vertices. As a consequence, planar graphs also have tree width and branch width O. For two planar graphs with V vertices, it is possible to determine in time O whether they are isomorphic or not. The meshness coefficient of a planar graph normalizes its number of bounded faces by dividing it by 2n-5. The maximum possible number of bounded faces in a planar graph with n vertices. Thus, it ranges from 0 for trees to 1 for maximal planar graphs.